the meeting of April 13, April 15, April 20, April 22, 2020. Looking for a motion for approval. Make a motion to approve as presented. There's a motion to approve the minutes. We might have lost Jay. I will second that. And we're open for discussion. Any discussion on the minutes? The motion was to approve the minutes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And again, this hey, is. I'll make a, make a motion for a brief uh, recess to see if we can get Supervisor Wickham back with us. Okay. Um, I'll second that. Uh, let's take a brief recess till we get Supervisor Wickham back on board. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Just bear with us. I think I'm just going to stay right here. So, um, should I try to call him? Or? There he is. He's back. Okay. We approve the minutes without you, Jay. <laughs> Jay, can you hear me? Is he unmuted? Jay, can, I can see him, but I can't hear him. Jay? I can hear you now. I'm good. Okay. We had a motion and a second, Jay, to approve the uh, minutes from April 13, 15, 20, and 22. And Ann and I voted in favor. I haven't called the vote yet. So all in, if you're, you have a chance to vote on the minutes. Sounds wonderful. Been waiting for it all day. <laughs> all right. All right, I'll, uh, motion carries three to zero. <clears throat> okay, under consent items, item number three, uh, we have four items. Item A, class BB beer permit at Midmart. Item B, class BB beer permit, Derby Grange Golf. Item C, class LC liquor license. Rivers Massey Marina and item D Sundown Mountain refund for second half of license. I believe we can handle these with one motion. It does. Did you see the Sundown Mountain refund? I did not. I don't recall looking at that. I'm grabbing my documents again. Yeah, I'm trying to get back from the Audit. Oh, this is Dawn. Mary, you're unmuted. I think you put these on there. Are you aware of a document that goes along with the Sundown Mountain? Yeah, there is no document included in the packet. What they did is um, because of the COVID and they can't sell liquor at this time, they did um, surrender their liquor license and the Alcoholic Beverages Division said that they are entitled to a refund for the second half of their license because they will not be using it. But I have not gotten actual documentation from the Alcoholic Beverages Division until it gets approved and then it goes to their accounting department and then I will get a letter. So should we table that, Mary? Well, <laughs> you can table it forever, but they won't approve it until the board does. So Okay, 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 gotcha. It amounts to like $455, I believe, would be the county's share. Yeah. Okay, but for the county share is $422.50. And the state's refund would be $591.50. That's for six months of their liquor license. OK, 
Okay. So what you would be approving would be the refund of $422.50. Here's what uh, I would suggest then that let's let's address these individually since, since there seems to be a question on I, item D. Uh, entertain a motion on item 3A, Class BB beer permit at Midmart. Make a motion to approve the... Um beer permit application for Midmart. I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. 3B, Class BB, beer permit, Derby Grange Golf. Make a motion to approve the class BB beer permit parens includes wine coolers. I will second that. All right, motion made and seconded uh, for the Derby Grange golf uh, permit. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Class LC liquor license, Rivers Massey Marina. Motion to approve. And I will second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded to approve the liquor license for Rivers Massey Marina. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three zero. Sundown Mountain refund for second half of license. Uh, based on Mary's input, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. All right, we'll move to item four on the agenda, 4A, uh, proof of publication. Do you have any? I will make a motion to approve the proof of publication. Motion to second. approve. Is there a second? Or what? Second. Okay. Motion being seconded to approve the proof of publication. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Okay. Next item. 4B, receipt of bids, furnish and apply pavement marking paint for the Dubuque County Secondary Road Department. Anthony, any explanation of this project? Anthony Barget. Um, no, this would just be our annual pavement marking program. Um, so just our typical routine pavement marking. Okay, thank you. You have two bids for this um, project. Let's see, the first one is from Iowa Plain Signing. The total amount do, um, I guess maybe I looked at Anthony. Do I need to do all of the one through five or just the total? Uh, you can just give the total. Just the total. Okay. So the total for this is $231,325. The next one is from Farner Asphalt Sealers. The total big bid was $189,568.50. $189,568.50. 
That was your last bid for that okay. one. Okay. We had two bids. They've both been read, opened and read. What's your pleasure with the board? I'll make a motion to uh, receive the bids and to have the county engineer review them and come back to uh, the board for his recommendation. Second. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Next up, 4C, receipt of bids, supply and deliver maintenance rock for the Dubuque County Secondary Road Department. Four bids for this. It looks like four bids. <clears throat> All right, Anthony, do I need to read um, out each of them, the M1 through the 12? Yeah, I probably have to because uh, we will more than likely have different, different vendors for different districts there. Okay, do you just do you need price per ton in uh, total price? You could just give the total price if they if they broke it down like they did. Okay, the first one is from River City Stone. Um, for the M one, it is fifty eight thousand four hundred forty three dollars and fifty cents. Fifty eight thousand four hundred forty three dollars and fifty cents. For the M two, it is fifty three thousand six hundred twenty five dollars. Fifty three thousand six hundred twenty five dollars. For the M3, it is $54,442, $54,442. For M4, it is $51,686.25, $51,686.25. For M5, it is $47,345. $45. M7 is $45,627.60. $45,627.60. M8 is $59,852.52. $59,852.52. And M12, $59,248. $49,248. The next one is from Wendling Quarries. They only submitted for an M3 and an M7, so I'll read those. For M3, it is $66,466. $66,466. And M7 is Next one is some CJ Moina and Sons. They bid just two in an M2 and an M4. For M2, the total amount is $64,675. $64,675. And for M4, it is $55,728.75. $55,728.75. The last one is from Bard Materials. And they've done M1, 2, 5, 8, and 12. So I'll read those. 
for M1, $55,831.50. $55,831.50. For M2, $59,475. $59,475. For M5, $49,294.50, $49,294.50. For M8, $66,868.20, $66,868.20. M12, $49,824, $49,824. That's the last bid for that. Project. Make a motion to receive the bids and refer them to the county engineer. And I will second that. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to receive the bids and refer to our county engineer for his recommendation. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Next up, 4D, receipt of bids, HMA resurfacing, culvert replacements, and grading on Lake Eleanor Road, Old Castle Road, and Ridgeview Drive, Project L-O-S-T-2101-6. First one is for River City Paving in the amount of one million fifty two thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and nine cents. One million fifty two dollars or fifty two thousand six hundred forty seven dollars and nine cents. The next one is from top grade excavating total project uh, project cost nine hundred ninety two thousand four hundred seventy dollars and sixteen cents nine hundred ninety two thousand four hundred seventy dollars and sixteen cents. We have uh, two bids on uh, item 4D. Oh, no, you have this is the last bid. Yeah, you had three bids on, on 4D. So this one is M. Oh, we have another one. Yeah, I'm sorry. MDE LLC doing business as McDermott Excavating in the amount of $1,057,903.28. One million fifty seven thousand nine hundred and three dollars and twenty eight cents. Okay, now what? Oh god, I don't didn't even think of that. I don't know. I didn't even think of it. Uh some Mary, can you unmute? Can you mute please? Thank you. Okay. So we had uh, on 4D, we had three bids. Uh, what's your pleasure on the bids? I'll make a motion to receive the bids and refer them to the county engineer um, for recommendation. Okay. Is there a second? Uh, Jay, can you? Oh, okay, okay, I will second. All right, thank you. Okay, <laughs> I was on mute. That's okay. I, I do. I left. You didn't miss me. I dropped and came back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, motion made and seconded to uh, receive the bids and refer to the county engineer for his recommendation. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three zero. Next up is four E on the agenda. Recommendation from the county sheriff. 
to purchase one new Ford Escape from Finn and Ford. Uh, Sheriff Kennedy on? Chief Deputy Renneker? I'm just seeing if they wanted to say anything. Okay. Is there a document that can be put up on this to, mm -hmm. for those folks that are participating by Zoom, which is all of us? I'll make a motion to approve the recommendation from the Butte County Sheriff and accept the Finn and Ford bid. Jay, I think you need to unmute. I will say that. Okay, thank you. All right, motion being seconded to approve the recommendation of the County Sheriff to purchase one new Ford Escape from Finn and Ford. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three to zero. Okay. We'll go to item five on the agenda, which is public hearings. Uh, item A, proof of publication. Five A proof of publication. You can see it up on the screen. I'll make a motion to approve the proof of publication. There's a motion to approve the proof of publication. I will second it. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I didn't hear Jay. I... Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Three zero, carried. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I no. can now. Yep. Can you hear me? Close. Yeah, I can hear you, Jay. 5B, public hearing. Proposed speed limit change on Bobcat Road. I'd like to have. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Okay, motion to open the public hearing and the second. Um, all in favor of open, opening the public hearing, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 I see his lips moving, so I'm assuming he's saying aye. Aye. Okay. Three to zero to open the public hearing. I don't know. I'm, 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 no. um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. You, you are unmuted, Jay. Um, okay. Um, so I guess I would ask uh, Anthony uh, Barget to... Uh, weigh in on on this uh, proposal on the on the uh, public hearing for the proposed speed limit changes on Bobcat Road. Okay, um, the city of Epworth has approached us about changing or posting the speed limit on um, Bobcat Road from Kidder Road up to uh, the city limits of Epworth. Uh, currently, it's a um, portion of it's paved and then a portion of it is gravel um because it was gravel before it was paved there uh it was considered 55 miles per hour during the day and 50 miles per hour during the night um by iowa code but there's no posting out there um to show that um because we didn't we did not post uh, speed limits on gravel roads um 
but they, the city of Epworth has made a request to um, post um, Bobcat Road from Kidder Road up to the, uh, the city limits uh, to 25 miles per hour. They have approved a resolution supporting this. And um, so yeah, now we're at the point where we're, we're having a public hearing to hear for or against this, this, uh, this resolution um, uh, as we proceed here. Okay, thank you, Anthony. Uh, the public hearing is open. Uh, does any of the, uh, uh, either Supervisor McDonough or Wickham have any comments on this matter? We'll open it up for public comment. Uh, if there's no one in the supervisor's chambers uh, from the public, so I'm going to um, ask those that are participating by Zoom to um, raise your hand or otherwise indicate that you would like to speak. We lost, Jay. No one raising their hand. Um, I would like to try to get, he's back on, okay. I'm back. If you okay, can. thank you, Supervisor Wickham. Uh, we, we had no yeah. comments, uh, but we still are in public hearing, so you didn't miss anything. Um, so uh, it looks like there's no comments on this. Is there anybody on from the city of Epworth that may want to speak on this? Okay, hearing none, I think uh, uh, a motion to close the public hearing would be in order. Hmm. I, will, I will make that motion or second if there was a motion made. I'll second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, and next we have the, under 5B1, the resolution uh, that would approve the speed limit change on Bobcat Road. We'll make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Second. Okay, motion made and second to approve the resolution to approve the speed limit change on Bobcat Road as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Okay, item C, 5C, public hearing, amendments to zoning ordinance. Uh, first one is uh, ZC number 3-07-20, David and Karen Koss, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. Make, uh, excuse me, uh, would entertain a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. And is there a second? I will second that. Okay, we're in public hearing. I will second that. Okay, thank you. All in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Three to zero, we'll open the public hearing. Uh, I think we'll go to Tammy Henry, our zoning administrator for uh, input and explanation for this case. Sure. Hi everybody, good night. Uh, have a, I'm ho I hope you're having a good night here. Okay, so the first case we have is the applicants are requesting rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential, 1.78 acres to be allowed to plat off an existing older home and to remodel and sell it to their son, uh, to their daughter and son-in-law. 
This property is located 3.09 miles south of the city of Epworth along Pleasant Grove Road East and is legally described as the Northeast of the Southwest, Section 34, T88 North, R1W, Taylor Township, BD County, Iowa. The property is owned by David and Karen Cox. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the north, the east, the south, and the west. A2 Agricultural Residential to the northwest. The A2 Agricultural Residential to the northwest on zoning case number 070915 was to allow for a summer cottage. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property and there are no special use permits attached to this property. Four rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners and there was, there was no city notified. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agricultural and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, Objective 12.7 may apply to this case. So um, Dave Schneider is on, and uh, uh, the three cases that we have tonight do happen to be Dave's rezoning with a follow-up plat. Um, so I'm going to let I'm going to let Dave get on if you'll unmute him so that he can uh, speak for his um, his clients. I am here. Okay, David. How are you all this evening? Fine, thank you. Uh, basically. Uh, uh, just to give you a little background on that, basically the Casas uh, have uh, been farming uh, their mother's farm for years. Uh, they mom had uh, been living in the older house. They had a new house on the same property. Uh, basically, mom has passed away, and they're transferring uh, uh, their mother's house to a daughter and son-in-law. Um, obviously, that's where the A2 zoning comes into place, and. Uh, uh, ultimately looking off, flatten it off so that they can finance the improvements on it. Any questions for David Schneider? Okay, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Tammy, uh, Henry, a question. Uh, uh, could you uh, tell us what the uh, recommendation again was from the uh, uh, zoning board. Yeah, the zoning board, um, there was five members present and it was five to zero in favor of it. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone else to speak on this matter in the public hearing? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. I just want to, under the Zoom, I just want to check with Don, make sure nobody had raised their hand or otherwise indicated an interest to speak. Hearing and seeing none, all in favor of the motion to close the public hearing, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. Aye. aye. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning. There's a motion to approve the rezoning. I will, I will second, second that. that. Okay, motion made and seconded to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'll make a motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. I will, I will second, second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Make a motion that the amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate zoning changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. I will, I will second, second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. It is approved. Next case, case C2. The uh, case number is ZC number 03-08-20. Todd and Melissa Spurl, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. 
uh, would uh, uh, normally we would go to have Tammy Hender give her explanation before we go into the public hearing. So Tammy, I'll defer to you. Okay. The applicants are requesting rezone from A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential 1.220 acres to finance a new home on the farm. The property is located 0.47 miles northeast of the city of Sherrill along Circle Ridge Road and is legally described as lot to a Circle Ridge subdivision plat to section seven, T90 North, R2E, Peru Township, Dubuque County, Iowa. The property is owned by Todd and Melissa Spurl. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agricultural to the north, the east, the south, and the west, A2 Agricultural Residential to the east and south, R1 Rural Residential to the south, and R2 Single Family Residential to the south and to the west. The A2 Agricultural Residential to the east on zoning case number 113215 was to allow an existing farm home to be separated from the farm ground for sale purposes. The A2 Agricultural Residential to the south on zoning case number 010116 was to allow for an existing farm home to be separated from the farm ground and to be sold to a family member. The R1 Rural Residential to the south on zoning case number 9011 of 76 was to allow for a single family home. And the R1 re Rural Residential to the south on zoning case number 9018 of 80 was to allow for a single family home. The R1 re Rural Residential to the south on zoning case number 010216 was to allow for a non-conforming agricultural property to get into compliance. The R2 Single Family Residential to the south on zoning case number 1248 of 96 was to allow for a single family home. And the R2 Single Family Residential to the west on zoning case number 020215 was to allow for a single family home. There, there are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property. There is one special use permit attached to this property on BA case number 1241 of 84. And this was, this was to allow for a telecommunication tower and 10 rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners and the city of Sherrill was notified. Comprehensive plan chapter nine in agricultural natural resources, page 134, objective 3.1 and chapter eight house page, housing page 122, objective 12.7 may apply to this case. And Dave, I can tell you, um, this again was a recommended vote from the zoning board of five to zero. And Dave Schneider is also on and representing this case. Okay, thank you, Tim. All right. I'll uh, just... uh, hold on, David. Uh, uh, entertain a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. So moved. Second. Or second. second. Motion made and seconded. <laughs> <laughs> To open the public hearing, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0 to open the public hearing. Okay, Dave Schneider, you can proceed. Okay, yeah, a little explanation on it. Basically, uh, this is just a situation where uh, I want to say back in the early 80s, uh, uh, when the 10 acre requirement was uh, really the only option on the ag ground. Uh, uh, Tom basically and his wife bought this uh, or received this 10 acres off uh, their dad's property. Uh, his brother currently owns it now. They just kind of plotted the 10 acres out there, not really paying attention to exactly where uh, where it was in relation to what uh, brother Joe was farming and uh, in effort right now. A couple things going on, just trying to get it. Uh, uh, we're doing the A2 just to accommodate, uh, you know, kind of a, a future uh sale of the house and then uh, uh, also then trying to correct uh, some title issues that were created out there uh, when they first created it. Uh, they've got a well that was on, bro uh, Tom's well was on Brother Joe's property and then uh, Tom was also occupying uh, some of uh, Joe's crop ground kind of on the southwest uh, side of his acreage. So trying to basically uh, uh, illustrate basically what they're occupying, get this thing straightened out for them. Okay, any questions for David Schneider? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, thank you, David. Any other comments in public hearing on this matter? And if you would like to speak on this, please raise your hand in Zoom or otherwise let us know. We have no one. I'll make a motion, motion to close, close the public hearing. hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Carried three to zero. I will, I will make, make a motion, motion to approve the, the rezoning request. request. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the rezoning request. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three to zero. I'll make a motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three zero. I'll make a motion that this amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes in the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspaper as required by law. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero and the rezoning request is approved. Item C3, case ZC number 03-09-20, Thomas and Rhonda Reniker, A1 Agricultural to A2 Agricultural Residential. Again, we'll okay. go to Tammy Henry for a brief explanation. All right. The applicant to request and rezone from A1 Agriculture to A2 Agricultural Residential, 1.92 acres, be allowed to separate the home and the buildings from the pasture grounds. The property is located 0.84 miles northwest of the city of Dubuque along Clay Hill Road and is legally described as lot two of one of one of the northwest of the southeast and lot one of one of one of the northwest of the southeast all in section five T89 North R2E Dubuque Township Dubuque County Iowa. The property is owned by Thomas and Rhonda Reniker and Joseph and Judith Reniker. Zoning in the area includes A1 Agriculture to the north the east, the south, and the west. C1 Conservancy to the north and the west. R3 Single Family Residential to the east. The R3 Single Family Residential to the east on zoning case number 101187 was to allow 54 acres to be zoned for a residential subdivision. There are no previous rezoning cases attached to this property and there are no special use permits attached to this property. 13 rezoning notification letters were sent to the property owners and the city of Dubuque was notified. Comprehensive Plan Chapter 9, Agriculture and Natural Resources, page 134, Objective 3.1, and Chapter 8, Housing, page 122, um, 12.7 may apply to this case. Um, and I'll let you know again, this was an approval from the Zoning Board of a recommendation of 5 to 0. Okay. And again, Dave Schneider is on to represent for the client. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Okay, I will yeah. Second Motion made and seconded to open the public hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Dave Schneider, you're okay to speak. I got to apologize. I just presented this one the last time. That's what happens when you're farming too late at night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is, this is, the other one was just a, an egg, uh, basically an egg parcel. Uh, there was a, a1 zoning on both, but anyway, this one here is a situation where uh, the uh, Rinnickers are basically trying to just clean up some title issues that were uh, presented here in the past uh, that they created in the past uh, since the 1980s when they kind of were splitting up Dad's farm to accommodate Tom's family and uh, his brother's uh, farming operation there. So, and this will go through the city of Dubuque uh, for the uh, platting side of it as well. Any questions for Dave Schneider? Hearing none, uh, um, ask anyone from the public if they would like to comment on this by raising your hand or otherwise notifying us of your intention to speak. Hearing and seeing none. I guess the floor would be open. It would be appropriate for a motion. I will make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Motion made and second to close the public hearing. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
Carried 3-0. I'll make a motion to approve the rezoning. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the rezoning. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Make a motion to suspend the requirement that this amendment be considered and voted on for passage at two prior meetings. I will second that. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. Make a motion that the amendment be adopted and that the zoning administrator be directed to enter the appropriate changes on the official zoning map and that the auditor be directed to arrange for the publication of the amendment and portion of the official zoning map as amended in the official county newspapers as required by law. I will second that. Okay, motion made and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0 and the rezoning request is approved. Next up is 5D, Notice of Public Hearing on the Status of Funded Activities for the Dubuque County Expanded Food Assistance. And my understanding, this is a federal requirement. Um, and uh, do we need to read this? This is Ed Raber, Ed. Supervisor uh, Baker. If you'd like, I would make some brief remarks. Thank you. This is Ed Raber, and um, at the end of March, with the assistance of ECIA, Butte County uh, uh, submitted an application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority for some federal community development block grant funds. Typically, when that happens, prior to the application being submitted to the state, um, local jurisdictions have to have a public hearing on that. In the particular case uh, of, of this grant round, uh, the state waived that early public hearing or prior public hearing. However, it is still a required step. So um, what, we're, what we've been asked to do is to have a public hearing on that application that you submitted. So the state's guidance is that this public hearing has to happen between four and 20 days from, uh, from this event, from setting a public hearing. And my recommendation is that you set the public hearing for your meeting time uh, next Monday. Okay. The, um, at that public hearing, there are a series of questions that uh, the federal funds require to be answered and a memo to that effect uh, uh, that lays those points out will be in uh, the public packet uh, for your meeting for the date that you set it for, which I'm recommending for next Monday. Thank you, Ed. Is there any other uh, comments on this? I think we'd be looking for a, uh, an approval uh, on the uh, to set the uh, public, hearing. public hearing. I will make a motion to set the public hearing for the status of food activities for the Butte County Expanded Food Assistance for Monday, May 4th. Second. Okay. Motion made and second. And at 10 a.m. Uh, at 10 a.m. I will amend that at 10 a.m. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. The notice of public hearing is approved. The date is set. All right. Uh, next up, item six, approval of plats. We have a uh, item A resolution, final plat, Circle Ridge subdivision, plat three, section seven, Prue Township. Tammy Henry. Okay. Yep. Yep, I'm here. Okay, so this is a follow up to the rezoning that you had just done for zoning case number 030820. The property is owned by Tana and Melissa Spurl and is located 0.47 miles northeast of the city of Sherrill along Circle Ridge Road with a total of 51.513 acres surveyed. 
The property is zoned A1 and now also zoned A2 as for, from your just previous approval. Um, 1.220 acres to the A2 agricultural residential. The purpose of this plat is to build a new home on this farm. The survey creates two lots. Lot one is a total of 1.22 acres surveyed and it will be the site for the new home. And lot two is a total of 50.293 acres and surveyed and it will remain in current ownership and use. Lot one and lot two will both use an approved residential entrance number 20-01 off of Circle Ridge Road. There were no additions or corrections required for this plat and there are no liens or mortgages on this property and all signatures are current. This plat has been reviewed by myself as plats officer and as all the required signatures, I respectfully recommend approval. So this is a follow-up to the case. This is, you can see there, the 1.22 acre site. That is where the site for the new home will be that we are doing the rezoned area for. And again, David. Dave Schneider is on. Chair will recognize yep. David Schneider. David on. I see that he's there, but he's not unmuted. Didn't he just talk us through this? He did. So this is the plat from what we did of uh, what we did just to prove the rezoning for. Right. I see he's there. I just see he's not unmuted. Does he? There we go. They show up now? Yes. Yep. Yeah, you're there, David. There we go. Uh, technology, huh? Yeah, this is just that situation where uh, basically Todd bought uh, roughly 50 some acres from his dad uh, and uh, he's he basically is going to put uh, his house on the corner of that uh, uh, refinancing. Obviously, the A understanding on the A2 was the rest of it was going to be unbuildable. Um, so, you know, ultimately, uh, yeah, just uh, the corner of the, the corner of his uh, ag property is going to be uh, the A2 and platted off for financing for his new home, basically a shout is what he's looking at there. Okay, any questions for Dave Schneider? Not want to change a motion make, on the final plat. Make a motion to approve the final plat. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the final plat. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. The resolution is carried. All right. Thank you. Action item seven. Item A, resolution, appointment of deputies, assistants, and clerks. Um, this is Dawn Sherman. The one that is up on Zoom and also on your YouTube um, streaming is an updated one. We had the incorrect name for our auditors. Um, and also the pay rate, he was offered a salary, which that has not changed, but the auditor is now instead of working 75 hours a pay period, this will be an 80 hour um, pay period employee. So that does change his hourly rate. Um, so the one that is in front of you on Zoom and on YouTube streaming is the, is the one I'm asking for approval this evening. Okay. What's your pleasure on the resolution? Regarding it's a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution for appointments of deputies, assistants, and clerks. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry it three to zero. Item 7B, resolution approving the quarterly DARE claim. Make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry 3-0. Item 7C, resolution. Approve the necessary documents with Thompson truck and trailer for one current model year heavy duty tandem axle truck for the Dubuque County Secondary Roads Department. I'm going to defer to uh, County Engineer Anthony Bargett and County Attorney C.J. May is also available uh, for this discussion. 
Okay, um, so Don's truck sales was actually the low bidder. Um, I guess I don't have the price right in front of me, but they they their low bid for a Freightliner was the the actual low bid. Um, and then Thompson Truck and Trailers International bid was the second place bid. Um, although um, the bid that uh, Don's put in was for an aluminum cab with the with the Freightliner truck, and that. That uh, does that goes against our specs that we put out there. We asked for a steel cab um, for for all of these chassis trucks. Uh, so international. So we threw out Freightliner and we went with the next uh, lowest bid, which is the international Thompson truck. And we've bought a couple of those in the past over the last couple of years, and we've had pretty good luck with them so far. Any questions for Anthony? Anthony, has this been communicated to the gentleman? I think we had some questions. Yes, about it has this. been. Okay. And has he confirmed back yep. to you that he understands the rationale? Yes, I uh, basically, you know, explained to him. Uh, well, the email I sent you guys, um, you know, kind of laying out the uh, sort of the breakdown of the bids and then the reasoning for choosing the Thompson truck. Mm -hmm. Um, I went through that same reasoning with uh, Lou Zabetka from Don's, and uh, he understood. And I, I think he's trying to trying to figure out if uh, he should be bidding here anymore. And I said, certainly, you know, keep keep putting in bids. Um, it just so happened to be his low bid did not fit our specifications. So, um, and I explained that to him. Very good. Make a motion to approve the resolution. And I will second that. Okay. There's a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Just, uh, I just want to uh, um, see if uh, County Attorney May in discussion has any comments. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Uh, no, I don't. The reason I uh, just sent a note to all of you was, uh, you know, we kind of had some communication last week from Auditor Dolan about contracts and um, those type of documents being reviewed by me. So I... I just wanted to let you know that I, I did look at those and they were they were in order, you know, for you folks to consider them. Thank you. All right. You Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the resolution signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three to zero. Item 7D, resolution to approve the necessary documents with Tri-State Truck Equipment for the purchase of snow equipment to be installed on one tandem axle truck for the Dubuque County Secondary Roads Department. <laughs> Anthony, we'll defer to you again. Sure, so just a little background. Um, the Tri-State Truck, they were the low bidder uh, for the um, I guess the, the equipment that, that goes on the, the chassis. So this would include the dump box and the, all the snow equipment, the plow and, and so forth. Um, so I would recommend the, um, their, their bid. Anthony, one question. Uh, in the past, we've had timing, uh, timeliness issues with this uh, contractor um, have those seemed to have worked themselves out or do we have the appropriate damages uh, in the contract? Yeah, I think it's either two or three years ago we had some issues with uh, um, getting the trucks late and delivered to us late. And then um, oh, a couple of years ago, we, we had uh, some language put through the uh, contract to kind of protect ourselves from um, you know, receiving the truck too late into the winter or, or, or past the working days that uh, we set for this. Um, so we really have not had any issues since then. Um, and the, the truck that the truck that was delivered for uh, this past winter came in on time and uh, there were no issues there at all. All right. Thank you. All right. What's your I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carry three zero. 
Item 7E, resolution approved necessary right of way documents for the culvert replacements on Hilkin Hill Road, St. Joe's Prairie Road, Streff Road, Edville Lane, Fisher Road, and Mitchell Mill Road. Project L C21 02-73-31. Make a motion to approve the resolution. I will second it. Motion made and seconded to approve the uh, resolution. Anthony, anything to add? Anthony Barnett? Not really. Um, yeah, so this, this is for our culvert replacement project and we just had a few culverts that um, a couple culverts that uh, had a narrow right away to them so to do um, the safer longer culverts uh, with with more better safety sloping we had to get some extra right away there okay thank you any further discussion all in favor signify by saying aye 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 aye, aye. carry three zero seven f resolution approved necessary documents with horsefield construction incorporated for the culvert replacements on Hilkin Hill Road, St. Joe's Prairie Road, Streff Road, Edville Lane, Fisher Road, and Mitchell Mill Road, Project L C 2102 73 31. Everything looks good on I'll my make end. A good. I will make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the resolution. Anthony, I'll get you. Your chance to get in there, if you'd like. Yes, everything looks good to me, so I would recommend this one. Okay, all in favor of the motion to approve the resolution, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye, aye. carried three to zero. Um, item eight on the agenda, 8A, Ide Bailey, FY19, DMA, SWA financial report. <clears throat> Does anybody make a motion to receive, receive and, file. and file? Is there a motion to receive and file? I will. I'll second Supervisor McDonough's receive and file motion. Okay. Motion made and seconded to receive and file. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, 8B, I. Bailey, FY19 County Financial Report. I will make a motion to receive and file the fiscal year 19 County Financial Report. Second. Okay. Motion made and second to uh, receive and file um, the I. Bailey, FY19 County Financial Report. I would like to. Uh, comment that uh, before we vote on this or to receive and file that uh, uh, we got uh, 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 Megan Bonner from our uh, uh, county auditor's office uh, uh, did get a glowing report from Ide Bailey for her efforts in preparing the financial statements. Is there any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried three to zero. 8C, M um, Manure Management Plan, MMP, Scott Ungs, Dubuque County, farm number 58921, and Raker Farm South, number 59825. I'll make a motion to receive and file the manure management plans. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded to receive and file. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3 0. Uh, um, item number nine approval of appointments. I don't believe we have any. We do have some open vacancies on our boards and commissions under 9B. Um, we'll go to item 10 personnel requisitions. None at this time. Item 11 tabled and pending items. Not aware of any. Number 12 on the agenda, public comments. At this time, anyone may address the board on matters of which are of concern to that person, which are not agenda items. 
please go to the podium, or in this case, raise your hand on Zoom. State your name and home address. Make your comments. However, no formal action on your comments may be taken at this time because of the notice requirements. Give a brief time here to, for people to raise their hand. We have one gentleman signifying he'd like to speak. Brad Parks. Okay. I think we're trying to get him. There we you go. are unmuted. Thanks, guys. Uh, I spoke to you a few weeks ago on the one Dubuque issue, and I've had the weirdest 10 days I think I've ever had in Iowa. Uh, on my birthday last Saturday, I started getting sick. Uh, and I started getting really sick by Wednesday I had 102 fever. I had one of the sweatiest, crazy nights, sore throat, red eyes. Uh, I went to Unity Point Finley, who was great, by the way. Uh, they connected me to Dr. Andrew Trom in New Jersey, a pulmonary doctor with my app, which was great. And uh, they told me to go get tested the next morning at Unity Point. Uh, he prescribed me uh, a cool narcotic cough syrup, which worked great, by the way. Just highly recommended. And so the next morning I went to Unity Point. And because I'm not actively working because our festival was suspended, I did not qualify for the state of Iowa testing standards. Uh, and I was kind of shocked because health-wise, I had nine of nine of the symptoms. And so the, the response from them was, hey, look, you know, you've already broken the fever. Uh, there may be a $750 to $1,000 charge for the test unless your insurance picks it up. I said, well, let's give it a couple of days. On Thursday, my lawyer sent me, Todd Loker out in Farley sent me a note to, uh, this test Iowa program. So I went on and took the test Iowa program. Next hour, I got an email. You absolutely should go get tested. You should be tested right now. Please come to Des Moines for your test today. But I don't live in Des Moines. I live in Dubuque. It's crazy. And so I called Mary Rose Corgan's office. I called the county. I called two on one. I called the Visiting Nurses Association, all who routed me back to Finley. Uh, I called Finley, took, and went over to sit in their parking lot, took my app with the letter from the state and said, look, I should be tested. And the nurse said, well, Mr. Parks, unfortunately, your fever is gone now, so you no longer qualify, so we cannot call it medically necessary. Now, as a caveat, I've had a lot of world experience, but I spent 10 years in insurance, three at Cottingham, Butler, Cisco. I know Blue Cross at the back of my hand. I'm an expert on insurance. That is insane. And so I asked her if I pay for it, is that cool? She said, yes. I said, look, I'll just go get it tested elsewhere because there's other tests I can take. I just took the test, like I think about an hour ago and the antibody test. So I, I don't even know if I had it yet or not. Uh, but the testing program, the state is mandating that Unity Point and medical associates have to meet the state mandated program and test through University of Iowa at a higher cost. And I asked the nurse and the practitioner on Friday, how many people like me don't have health insurance or had health insurance issues? I have health insurance, but I don't pay deductible. And she said, there are a lot. I said, 10, she said, no, hundreds. But she couldn't give me a number because that would be HIPAA violation. Here's my worry. I have uh, very scarred lungs from the Army, scarred sarcoidosis. I've had numerous pneumonias. I broke three ribs about a month because I'm stupid. And so I'm a high-risk person with COVID. The thing that threatens me, according to my doctor friends back in L.A., is, is hypoxia, not, not the pneumonia, which I actually got diagnosed with, and they gave me some antibiotics and, and the cool cough syrup. Unity Point was great. I was treated for COVID. I've never been tested for COVID until an hour ago. My concern is what kills people, according to my physician friends and pulmonary friends and the doctor trauma in New Jersey, is that people get sick, they feel a fever and a cough, and they feel just fine, and suddenly their, their oxygen rates are at 60, 50% versus 90. By the time they're ventilated, it's too late to save them. So here's my concern. I live in Asbury now. I grew up on a farm in Sitzer, Wisconsin. I have a lot of friends in the county. My, my lawyer, Ty Loper, has tons of farming clients, older people. They're, they're, they're not in that system. I don't know if anyone in the county or the city has any numbers on how many people have called in to test Iowa and been told they don't qualify to test. And is there any way that we can make sure they're getting both a, a, a thermometer reading and a, a blood oxygen reading? It's a, it's a machine like it's like this big. It's a little machine you stick your finger in. I happen to have access to one. My blood oxygen was 80%, so I was fine. But my concern is in the county, in some of these small farm communities, if someone is ill, but they don't quite qualify because they're not working in the workplace, their medical facility is not allowed to buy Iowa health services to call it a medically necessary procedure. 
My gut is there are probably thousands of people that have it. I'm pretty sure I had it. Uh, and by the way, I'm over it now, but it was a, it was a mess. It, it, I felt horrible. I still feel kind of tired from it. But uh, as the county, my concern is after my work with you, uh, especially talking to Ann and Jay about how the county works and the city resources, my concern is, is there a system that your county health supervisors, your county health services people, if there's someone like me that goes to test Iowa and says, this person has all the symptoms, is the state of Iowa talking to the county? And is there a way that the county can make sure that someone goes to see those people to make sure they're being tested both for, for temperature and for hypoxia so they can get the right treatment the right way? Uh, I've never in my life been so stunned. We, we live in the smartest country in the world. I, was, I came back to Iowa to set up the pandemic because LA is not the best place for me to be. And I ended up getting sick anyway, and I still can't get tested. It's absolutely beyond belief. And both Unity Point and medical associates doctors that are my physicians told me, look, their hands are tied. It's a state rule. So the Test Iowa program has no testing facilities in Dubuque. That worries me. So I talked to Chuck Eisenhart and I talked to the city and everyone said I should give you guys a heads up because the city has great resources. The county, I think a lot of times does not get the respect in the city it deserves, frankly. I've been working on that with the one to be program. I think there needs to be more coordination, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up that there are a lot of people in the county at both Unity Point and Medical Associates that have been reporting illnesses or fevers that have been told they cannot qualify for the state's testing level. And because of that, it would have to be paid for out of pocket. Now I can pay for that, but some people can't. And that, that worries the hell because I know my, my grandpa and my grandma were farm people. They're stubborn as hell. They're gonna go home and they're gonna go home and they're gonna, they're gonna tough it out. But uh, you know, last week there were 75% of people at High V wearing masks. My report today from friends, about 16% of people wearing masks. I have four friends on Facebook that said, hey, look, now the state, let's go to Bellevue and Cascade and and let's go to Bellevue and uh, Guttenberg for dinner because they're open. I'm very worried about how the county's gonna respond to this. I just wanna give you guys a heads up that someone should be talking to the state to make sure that people go to Cess, Iowa, have the ability to get tested in Dubuque without going to Des Moines. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. We- uh, Thank you. Public comments are not allowed to um, engage or, or uh, take action on this, but uh, uh, we are going- well, I just wanna give you a heads up. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Brad. Uh, it is, uh, uh, we, we have our COVID-19 work session scheduled. I guess I'll uh, go to uh, defer to Ann and Jay. If they want a very brief recess or if we want to roll right into the uh, work session regarding COVID-19. Okay. I'm, I'm fine to, to keep moving. All right. All right, uh, we're into our uh, work session regarding COVID-19. So we'll defer to uh, Patrice Lambert and Tom Berger for their reports. Sure, this is Patrice Lambert and I can begin. And I do believe Dr. Bobby Canero is also going to be speaking after um, Tom is finished as well. Um, I'll just begin. I, um, I sound like a broken record, but I'll just begin by identifying those people who are on our instant management team in case I do refer to as we. So if there's people here for the first time, they'll know who um, the instant management team is. And that is uh, Tom Berger, who's our EMA, um, Stacy Killian, who is the director of the Visiting Nurse Association, Mary Rose Corrigan, the city health specialist, and myself. And unfortunately, um, you probably have all heard that Dubuque County um, now does have an additional death due to the COVID. And I, as I said earlier, and I will this afternoon, and I will say again, is that I extend my sincere sympathy to the family and the friends of this person. These daily reports of new cases and deaths may seem just like reports with numbers but they are not, they are people. It's important that we all remember that and never become numb to the impact that COVID-19 is having on families and communities. We can all honor the memories of those lost by doing our part to limit the spread of the virus. So again, my sincere sympathy to that person. 
And you probably are all aware of our new numbers, but I'll just briefly share those with you. In the state of Iowa, today we had a total confirmed case, um, positive cases of 5,868. Um, there were a total in the state of Iowa, total deaths were 127. Total people tested in the state of Iowa were 38,150. And total confirmed cases recovered in the state of Iowa was 2,021. And then in Dubuque County, as of today, we've had 87 total confirmed cases. We've now had two deaths. We've had 1,117 people that have been tested. And we now have 17 um, people that um, are total confirmed cases recovered. So those are our current numbers. And I'm sure, again, you're all aware of the uh, new proclamation signed by the governor today. And the proclamation actually loosens the social distancing measures in 77 counties, which is effective on Friday, May 1st. But it does continue with other restrictions, um, such as Dubuque County, until Friday, May 15th. And in the 77 counties, I'm only briefly going to share that the proclamation permits that restaurants, fitness centers, malls, libraries, racetracks, and certain other retail establishments to um, reopen in a limited fashion with public um, health measures in place. And I know you can Google the whole entire um, governor's proclamation if you wish to um, have additional information on that. Um, and I will also inform everyone that the Incident Management Command Team does converse on a daily basis, if not two or three or additional times more. So over the weekend, we were quite concerned with the increase of our positive numbers. So we did ask um, Tom Berger through the EOC to request a testing strike team through the Iowa Department of Public Health. And again, it was mainly based on the increase of the positive tests that we have seen over the past few days. We do know that with um, testiowa.com, that that is a brand new program. We have encouraged um, many ways to have people in Dubuque County complete that survey or that assessment. But I fully understand that the first site was down in Des Moines. So even the people who were eligible to have the testing would have to drive to Des Moines. So because this is a new program with the testiowa.com, we don't know if Dubuque County um, will get uh, selected to be a site, or if we do, how long that would take to have Dubuque County be um, a testing site. So we thought with the testing strike team that that might be a better option for us. And we knew it wouldn't hurt by requesting it um, through the EOC. So the EOC then did contact me Saturday night with a few more questions um, regarding our request. And what the strike team, if it's approved, this team will actually come to our area and they will do a massive testing for the residents of the county. However, those resident selection are based on the selection that IDPH will inform us of that population. So we don't know if it would be 100 people or 1,000 people or whatever the case was or would be, but we wanted to get our request in. There would be, if we were selected to have a testing strike team come to Dubuque County, there would not be um, any cost for this team to come except like um, with any increase in testing, we know that we will probably find positives. And then Dubuque County, through the Visiting Nurse Association with um, Stacy and her staff, will have to do the follow-up um, as we do for any of the positive. But we might also see an increase in the positive, so that would probably be the only cost to Dubuque County, which um, everything else would be covered by the state. 
So late this afternoon, I did get a call from the governor's office, and they had indeed received Dubuque County Instant Management Command Team request to have a testing strike team come to Dubuque County based on our increased positive cases that we have experienced these last couple of days. They did inform me that um, they will be looking into this further, and they're hoping, um, initially they did say hopefully within a day, but then they did say it might be a couple of days that they will be getting back to me to see if um, we are accepted or not. So they did have more general questions such as would we have a testing site in place? Um, I mean, just some general information, which I was able to address all of their questions. They did say if, they, if we were accepted to um, be a site for their testing strike team, that it, after that approval, it would still probably take a couple of days just to organize their team and work with us to set this up. So we are really, um, I know hoping is probably not the best terminology to use, but we are um, really hoping that we will be accepted to have this testing strike team come in because we do know that criteria is still in place for the testing. And we do know that with the um, test Iowa, we may or we may not be selected. So please know that we are looking at um, different angles to get increased testing to come into Dubuque County. And then with that, um, I know we had some questions with the cost for the test Iowa if we were to be selected a site. So I did ask the governor's office for clarification this afternoon if we were selected as a site. And um, again, the governor's office said that the county itself would not be charged any cost at all. But again, if we were to see the increased um, positives, we would utilize our visiting nurse association and communicable disease nurses to do our follow-up, which would increase some of our cost. And Tom um, Beshin, the chair of the Board of Health, I do not believe he's able to be with us um, because he did have a conflict with this meeting, but he did ask that I report on what our costs are um, for Dubuque County with the healthcare providers. And he was able to find um, information through the UCL, the um, United Clinical Lab. And this is the information that I will be sharing that he had shared with me, was that the nasal swab test, um, if it goes to the hygienic lab, um, there's no cost to um, the resident or the patient, but there is $27 charge for handling. And if that test does go to Mayo, we did know that there would be a charge uh, for that, and that cost is $147. And then if there were to be any additional testing, and that would be billed to the individual or the county or whatever the case may be, that charge would be $65. And then Tom did ask about the antibody testing. And again, Dr. Canero can touch on these numbers. Um, he is our medical liaison. If he does have additional information, I'm sorry, I don't want to put him on the spot. But the antibody testing, if it's sent to Mayo, it would be a charge of $70. And then if it was done in-house, but again, they're not able to um, institute this program as of yet. They're hoping to very soon. And then their antibody, antibody testing in-house again could be limited because of the number of regions that might be available. But if they were able to do that, the cost would be approximately um, $30 in that area. And again, our testing site committee continues to meet. The orientation has begun with um, the uh, testing site program that we do have in place. I did share that with the governor's office today, you know, just in case they needed additional help, that I wanted them to know that we are also um, working on this end and that if they did need additional help, that we could possibly utilize um, the people that are being orientated uh, for that site. 
So that's basically my report for tonight. Um, and like I said, Tom Berger and Dr. Bobby Canero, I know will have some information to share as well. This is Ed Raber. I have a quick question for Patrice. Sure. Uh, thanks for the report, Patrice, and, uh, and the conversation we've had uh, uh, in the last few. The, uh, you had mentioned the contract tracing um, that, that currently the VNA is doing. The, um, what, I, what I've heard from the governor during her press conferences is that, that at their Test Iowa sites, they're planning to do that. Did they indicate that they would that they would not be able to do that? Or is that something, she even I think today mentioned that the National Guard might do that. So is, is that kind of a, is that one of the, 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 the moving targets right now? Or is that something that they may come in and say, yeah, we'll actually do the contact tracing as well? Um, the Iowa Department of Public Health did send out a survey to all 99 counties because there are some counties that are, believe it or not, smaller and staff than what we are, and we were asked if we wanted the National Guard to do our follow-up or additional staff at Iowa Department of Public Health, or if we wanted to continue to do that. And um, it was either a yes or a no. We couldn't say that, um, well, if we were to get 10 positive in a day, we could do five, could you do five? It was either an all or nothing. So our instant uh, management uh, command team did talk about this. And right now, uh, with Stacy and the communicable disease nurses, it is manageable. So I did respond back because we had to have, they sent it out last night and we had to respond by noon today. And I did um, report that we will continue to do our own at this time. And it's my understanding that if we see that we were, were to get bombarded with um, increased positives that we could connect with Iowa Department of Public Health. But then again, everything, we would not be allowed then to go back to do our own um, interviewing. And we really feel as though by having our own communicable disease nurses, we know our county, we know our populations, it's much more personable. Um, they may not know the person who is contacting them, but chances are um, they probably have heard their name. They have for sure heard of our agencies. So we just believe that that would reduce some of the anxiety that they're going through right now instead of having a person from Des Moines or the National Guard. I mean, I'm not saying this in a negative way, but instead of having them contact someone who was who had just tested positive, you know, not knowing um, any of the connections that um, or the relationships that we already have built in Dubuque County. So that's why we decided to stay with our um, setup as we have it as of now. Thanks for that additional info. Sure. Thanks, Ed. And uh, if the other, I'm, I'm looking at the other supervisors uh, to see if they were about to ask a question. As a follow-up, um, would there filter if, if, uh, if the strike team, that's a great name, if the strike team were to come here, um, would they be using Test Iowa as their uh, entry point, uh, that assessment as the entry point to to get a recommendation uh, to be tested and a time to do that in Dubuque, or would it be something else that that um, the incident management team might be managing or some other group? It's my understanding that there is no relationship for qualification or eligibility between those two. And that's why we worked with Tom Berger to submit it through the EOC because um, the incident management command team just we, we, were, we were concerned about the increase of our numbers in the last couple of days. So that was our rationale to be um, putting that request in. So it's my understanding this strike, this testing strike team is works separately 
than the testiowa.com. And even if we were to receive that test that strike testing strike team to come to Dubuque County, if we still have enough assessments into the testiowa.com, we might even benefit from having that. I do not believe if we were to have the strike team here that that would disqualify us from having the Test Iowa team come in. And I can double check when the governor's office calls again if you want me to, but that was my understanding that they're actually two separate entities. Do you know which one, Patrice, uh, arrived uh, last Thursday in Tama? Was that, a, a, for lack of a better word, a full Test Iowa site or was that a strike team site? I believe Tama was a strike team, and then on Saturday was the first test Iowa. So Aunt, this is Ann McDonough. Patrice, as I understand it, if the strike team comes, now we've asked for a strike team, the incident, the EOC did through the EOC. If the strike team comes, the criteria for testing. Did you hear Brad Park's presentation before the Board of Supervisors uh, yes, 15 minutes ago? Yes, I did. Okay. If the strike team came, would Brad Parks, I'm going to use you as hypothetical, sir. I hope that's okay. Uh, he's waving yes. Would that? Would he get tested through a strike team? And, and that is, it's my understanding that if we were to have a strike team come from IDPH and the governor's office, they would inform us of the eligible people. Um, okay. I don't know if they would do it age range. I don't know if they would do it population range. Um, I I don't know. Okay, so but strike we, team, I'll, we don't know the criteria. Now let's talk about Test Iowa. If we convince Test Iowa to come here, would Brad Parks be tested under Brett, under Test Iowa's criteria? If he had completed, which it sounds like he did, he completed the survey and it was tested eligible for the testing. However, the site was down in Des Moines. I don't know enough if they will even come back to him to say, we, we noticed that you were not in Des Moines. Our next site will be at this location. I right, don't- I'm just trying to, Patrice, I'm trying to find out the criteria. To how do you get tested? It sounds like the test Iowa criteria, we don't know. I mean, we're, at, we're inviting these different folks to come, but we don't know what their criteria is. Meanwhile, we have a whole nother subcommittee, I think, working on trying to create our own testing algorithm of what our, we want the testing to be. And that would go through them through maybe our community testing site. I mean, we have a lot of different pull downs of how to get tested. Meanwhile, we have a citizen who has COVID-19 and can't get tested for 10 days. So I, I'm not sure how we, you know, what's the best way forward? What's your recommendation? Do we continue on all three paths or do we go one direction? I mean, what, what are you suggesting? My suggestion is yes, all three paths. Um, the testing site committee is working with the healthcare providers. We're in the process of the orientation, and if the healthcare providers are saying that they're, need, they're closing in on a surge, then we will have that test site be able to be up and running within 72 days. However, that's not the indicator from the healthcare providers at this time. The second is the testing strike team that we just requested for we thought if that is there, why not ask for it? We're seeing our numbers increase, why not? And then the third is to continue encouraging people to complete that assessment on testiowa.com because if the state sees that we do have a number of individuals in Dubuque County that are eligible for testing, then that could be a site in the near future. Now, to my knowledge, I do not believe a new site has been announced as of yet. I might be wrong. I might have missed it this afternoon. But I 
do not believe that a new site has been announced for the testiowa.com at this time. This is Ed Raber, if I, uh, unless you were going to speak, Supervisor McDonough. Um, the, thank you, Patrice. Uh, just a clarification for everybody. You, you said 72 days. You meant 72 hours, three days oh, time. Sorry. That's fine. Uh, just as a simple clarification. Um, the governor did today mention Blackhawk County as a location that they were going to be arriving to, um, to do that, uh, to do some testing. Uh, potentially as early as Wednesday, I think is what the governor said. And uh, I must admit that I uh, will have to go back and review that to see if, if uh, she had indicated if they were talking about a strike team or if establishing another test Iowa uh, full-blown community testing site. Um, I, so I'll have to review that. And, and maybe she didn't actually say that, but now we understand that there's a distinction between those two um, services that the state's looking to deliver. Uh, as we, um, as you and I have discussed uh, just very recently, um, uh, an, perhaps extending another invitation to, um, to the governor's office to uh, uh, establish a full test Iowa site here would be an, um, one of those other parallel tracks that you had just mentioned. Uh, or Supervisor McDonough had just mentioned. Um, that would be another uh, avenue in addition to a, a potentially a, a quick strike team that could evolve into that. Um, as, as, uh, as I've had opportunity to visit with some of the uh, United Clinical Labs and others about some of the information you've already reported, I, I think that uh, looking at the criteria that the states provided, I think Mr. Parks, uh, demonstrates that, um, uh, that that he was uh, through Test Iowa uh, flagged as an individual that should be tested. Um, although um, based on the Iowa Department of Public Health, uh, the, the guidelines that we have been under operating under, um, that that may not be quite so uh, um, uh, clear that that he would have been tested, and obviously had some struggles there. So. Um, I don't certainly understand the matrix that the state has behind their test Iowa assessment, but it seems that they are flagging uh, more readily um, uh, frontline healthcare providers, whether that's in long care facility, long term care facilities or medical uh, facilities, as well as those that have been around those people, just based on anecdotally on, on who I've talked with that, uh, that fill those different niches that have taken the assessment. So my suggestion would be to ask the ask the the, the administration, ask the governor's office to, uh, in addition to the excellent idea to ask a strike force to come here to ask them to bring a test to Iowa site here. And Patrice, I will. will. Will we be getting an update from the testing site committee from our board of health? Is that going to be tonight? No. It will not be that, tonight. Will it be Wednesday? Um, I do not believe we've established an agenda as of yet for Wednesday. Um, Bob or Dr. Bobby Canero might have some information, but it's my understanding from that committee that um, the healthcare providers are still able to maintain the request for the tests. But I yes, will. I let... They may have capacity, but they're not testing Brad Park. <laughs> So when we're not testing people, we can have capacity if nobody can get in. We, st we need to be developing the algorithm to make something happen ourselves is what it sounds like. It, yeah. I think all three things should be pursued. Yeah, this, and this is, and this again, is. we're just struggling with the supplies, the testing supplies at this time. I know that the governor at one time, I don't know if it was today or Friday, had said that um, they have been requesting additional um, testing or collection and testing supplies for the state of Iowa. But we are, tr trust me, Anne, we are looking at every angle possible because we do fully understand these individual stories.
I'm going to, I'm going to just jump in here. Aren't there 18,000 tests available in Dubuque County test kits available in Dubuque County? And was that a number that happened that, I mean, was that a number that the, um, our committee picked out or was that a number that somebody acquired um, that is higher than the number that was needed and, and maybe would allow us to do more testing? Uh, 18,000 seems like a pretty good number to start with anyway. Um, but I keep hearing that we don't have enough tests. So what is it? Do we have enough or yeah, this, don't this we is, have enough? This, this is Bobby Canero. Can, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so just, just to give you a little bit of an update, and it's going to build off of what Patrice said because she did a really good job giving an overview on testing. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, I, I've, I've had multiple conversations with Dr. Vander Heiden over the last few weeks. Uh, and and you're, you're correct, Dave. I mean, we do have, you know, sufficient tests. Um, it, it, but, but just to be more specific, you know, there's two types of tests, as you know. One is uh, the PCR test, which is done through a nasal swab. That's the, that, for that particular test, <clears throat> we can either send those tests out to Mayo or the state, or we can do them in-house. So we have about 18,000 test kits that we could that we can do the nasal swab on and send out to either Mayo or the state. We also have the ability to do in-house testing, but we do but we are limited on the amount of that particular test due to the reagents that are necessary to perform that test. We're, so we're uh, reserving in-house testing to uh, patients that are maybe more acutely in need, if they're in the emergency room, if they're inpatient. <clears throat> the other test, the antibody test, <clears throat> we do not have the capability of doing yet in-house, but we should be getting that either this week or next week. Um, so to answer your question, we do have sufficient capability to test a pretty, you know, a decent percent of the population. I mean, currently only 1% of Iowa has been tested uh, and only 1% of Dubuque County has been tested. The reason has not been necessarily because of testing capability, although that was initially the concern. Now it's more so the algorithms that we have in place. Um, and so it's not the provider's fault uh, for why certain patients are not getting tested, unfortunately. It's the algorithms that we have, which we've gotten from the state and the CDC. Uh, I think those algorithms were put in place initially to um, limit uh, uh, a shortage of testing and also uh, to prevent a surge or to be prepared for a surge. Now we need to change those algorithms because now we're looking at reopening the economy. So I do believe that we need to revisit these algorithms, but we're, we're waiting on guidance from the state for that. <clears throat> I, I agree with Ann and Patrice that I think all three uh, testing options should be uh, looked at uh, as far as uh, getting our own uh, site, testing, you know, test Iowa, as well as the strike team. I think all of those should be in play. Um, and, you know, and even with the antibody test, you know, we don't know what to do with that once we have them. You know, if someone comes back positive with antibodies, how do we use that information to guide us? We, we don't have good uh, guidance yet on that. So we're still waiting, unfortunately, uh, uh, for a lot of these answers from the state. Thank you, Dr. Canero. Um, any other questions or comments? Uh, Dr. Canero, I, I'm going to ask ask you if if you were able if you were on when on the line when uh, uh, the uh, person spoke in. Uh, I, and by the way, I, I know I know the the person, uh, but I'm not going to repeat his name uh, when the 
we had someone speak in public uh, comments about difficulty um, being tested when um, he certainly felt like the the criteria was there. Uh, yeah. How, how, yeah, I, I, how I, I, we, I did. I, 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 it, it seems like there's no answers to explain to him uh, why he didn't get tested. I, I don't have the explanation. I haven't heard anybody give a good explanation why he wasn't tested. So this, so this is my, this is my understanding of, of um, his situation. <clears throat> so, um, you know, given his uh, clinical situation, he did not qualify to get testing through the providers we have in Dubuque because of the algorithm they currently follow. However, the algorithm that Test Iowa is using is a broader algorithm. So he would have qualified for that particular algorithm. So he could have went to Des Moines and gotten a test. Unfortunately, we don't have that in Dubuque yet. Um, is that, am I saying that correctly? Correct. And just yeah. to throw in, I'm also Bobby? Bobby, this is yeah. Diane Kate Freiberger. Yep. Hi, Diane. The test Iowa site great. The test Iowa site algorithm is amazing. I couldn't believe how in-depth it was. It was very thoughtfully put together. It had both historical and current data projection. It, it was a really well done survey. Uh, so I thought for sure I'd qualify to get tested. And I was kind of surprised that when I got to the end, I had to go to Des Moines. It, it doesn't make sense to me that that data isn't sent to the county and city because you have two passionate people, Mary Rose and the county, both trying to get testing done. It seems like the, the issue with the state of Iowa is coordination with the local level. Uh, I, I think if that data were provided to the county and city people, it would be a lot more efficient to get that testing protocol put together, or at least to get someone from the county to make phone calls, to tap into people, to give them advice on how to get over this. Because there are things you can do. You can do breathing exercises. You can not lay down. You can do exercise. You can do, you can do deep breath exercises. You can move. Uh, none of that's being promoted. But, but I have to say, for the state of Iowa, the test Iowa site was exceptionally well done. Instant information back. I've been checked in every day from the state email. Uh, I, I'm just baffled why that state information isn't transferred to the county the health department for local action. Yeah, you're you're exactly right, and and that's that's been the frustration. the The algorithm that Test Iowa currently is using is different than the algorithm we have here on the local level, and I'm not sure how we could how we change that. I mean, I I think we probably need to continue to have conversations um, with uh, the providers, but you're you're exactly right. That's why there there's a disconnect. This is Diane Pape Freiberger. May I speak? Of course, Diane. Okay, um, last week, actually, I had posed the question to Patrice who sent it to IDPH regard regarding the criteria for Test Iowa. With Test Iowa, the criteria is the same as what the State Hygienic Lab has put out, but there are some exceptions, and those are the healthcare providers and long-term care um, providers will come as a priority, and also, the um, workers in manufacturing, if, if there's an outbreak there, then there will be more testing in that area. But other than that, the criteria is the same. And with the person that spoke before, they, thought they did have severe enough symptoms to be able to be tested. But the issue appears to be here that he would have to go to Des Moines to get tested at that point uh, until if we can get a testing site in Dubuque. And with United Clinical Lab, in conversations with Dr. Vanderheide, um, when they are running the test in-house, they do not have to follow criteria of the State Hygienic Lab or the criteria of Mayo Clinic. But all tests, whether it's negative or positive, need to get reported to the State Hygienic Lab whether it's run inside the house at UCL or whether it's run at Mayo Clinic, all of them so that there is that central database for people to know what's happening there. 
Correct. You know, and Diane, I think the only issue with doing the in-house test is that's where we do have a limited supply. Thank you, Bobby. Okay. Any other questions, comments? This is Ed Raber again, Supervisor Baker. Um, I wanted to point out uh, another thing that the governor had said and to, to, to build on uh, what Dr. Canero has just said. Um, uh, at the strike team um, that the state sent to Tama, and I believe also Saturday in Des Moines, uh, the uh, test Iowa clinics there were offering uh, both the um, uh, the PCR nose swab as well as the uh, serology um, antibody test. And on many um, clients that those days, they were delivering both. So they were, they were, they were overlapping and doing both. Um, figuring out which is the appropriate thing to do if you were to move ahead here or, or um, who are the discussion points along that, that continuum there. Um, I'm, I'm looking for just a bit of guidance that we should continue uh, as I interface with the uh, Board of Health as with, and with you and with the incident management team. Are you interested in continuing to push on both, uh, all of those fronts um, that, uh, that I think Patrice and, and Supervisor McDonough pointed out? Edward, was that question for me specifically? Uh, that was actually for the supervisors, but I, I okay, would, uh, th th not necessarily just for them, Bobby. Yeah, I, I personally would, would uh, support that to push for both. Mm -hmm. Any uh, comments from supervisors uh, McDonough and Wickham? I, uh, I, I'll, I'll go first. I, I have been. Uh, a proponent of increasing testing. I think that's the only way um, to safely uh, uh, move forward uh, with our economy, opening our economy. And uh, um, I, I, I think the more information we have, the better served we will be. But the um, from what I have seen from the state, it's uh, uh, cases like uh, uh, we heard tonight are not all that unusual. Yeah, I would certainly, Supervisor Wickham, I, I would certainly uh, uh, propose uh, going after both those solutions that we talked about and, and continuing to explore a third one. Let's see if there's additional outside options for, for testing, and possibly we could contract even directly with the same group that the state of Iowa did to, to provide us with additional testing processes and equipment uh, and uh, obviously the individual supply chain things that are needed to get the testing done. But try any and all methods. Supervisor McDonough here. I understand we're working on a three-pronged approach. One is that the strike, the, the incident team is following down a strike team, and I applaud them for taking the lead on that and attempting to make that happen, and I hope you don't let up. Second is the Test Iowa, and I believe that um, Ed Raber is drafting something for us to communicate our desire to work with the state on bringing a Test Iowa program here. It's not like we're just sitting and letting this go by. Um, I applaud Ed, he's working on some correspondence that we can use with, um, with our legislative team. And I think that's great, let's, let's follow that down as well. But I also think we need to continue to, I support the work of the testing committee as a part of the Board of Health to look at development of our own algorithm. That last piece, the, piece, the third, Thing, we will need to know what costs are um, because we can't 
clearly go our own direction in our own way and completely self-fund this. And um, we would need to know what we're looking at for expense. Um, I want to, um, Chair Baker, um, Mr. Parks has had his hand raised several times with the question. Um, and I don't know if you want to defer to him to have him, um, if he has a comment he wishes to make. I, yeah, and I, I can't see that. So I thank you for pointing that out. And could we unmute uh, uh, Mr. Parks? No, just as a last comment, the reason I was declined by uh, Unity Point the first time wasn't because of health reasons, it's because I wasn't actively working, which didn't make any sense. With that said, I, I've lost kind of my faith in the state of Iowa's approach, but I've been talking to Ann, working with Jay, working with Mike and Roy in the city. The local government in Dubuque has been very impressive. Uh, and I think that you all deserve a little pat in the back. I don't think people give you as much credit as you guys deserve for dealing with global pandemics, because frankly, the national and, and state level have not done you any services. Uh, but I, I think that you, you do have the authority to demand from the state. It doesn't make any sense that we're a 10 area versus Des Moines, and there's no testing here from the state. That, 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 that begs all reason. So I just want to say thank you for letting me be heard, and you know, we're here to help. But uh, I know the job you guys do, all three of you, and I think that uh, Dubuque owes you all uh, uh, congratulations because you guys are certainly doing the work that needs to be done, even if you're not getting the help you need. So I hope, hopefully the state of Iowa will come to the table this week and really give you the tools you need. Thank you. Supervisor Baker, this is Diane Hyken. Can I ask a question? Of course, go ahead, Diane. Okay, Dr. Canero, are you still on the phone? Bobby, are you still there? I'm still here. Okay. Um, so uh, I feel like there might be a misunderstanding that um, what we need, I feel what we need locally is, yeah, we need a different algorithm that would um, enable our local providers to be more aggressive in ordering the testing. And I feel as if people think that um, we do need to kind of sit around and wait for the state to create that, but it is correct, Dr. Canero, that our local providers can come up with their own algorithm, right? Um, <clears throat> yes, it's, well, if they can if we are testing in-house, <clears throat> because then we don't need to rely on um, the state, the state at that point. Okay, so further then, who, who do we need to be talking to um, from a, a medical provider standpoint? Is it the local medical society? Are there key people at clinics? Um, I have, and I think Diane Pape Freiberger has as well, we have reached out to the subcommittee. I have asked at least three times to communicate with them and, and not been able to. So as a board of health member, we really, it seems like we don't have any power to um, do anything to create an algorithm, but who can we talk to in our medical community? Um, and as you, you as the liaison, I'm hoping you can help with this. Who can we talk to, to encourage them to be more aggressive? Is it I mean, is this a liability issue? What seems to be the barrier, the, the comfort issue for them that they aren't doing that? Do you know? <clears throat> I don't, I, you know, I, I don't think they're asking the question <clears throat> the way we are. Um, I think they're just following the protocols. Um, and <clears throat> I think for, you know, I, I think I would say for the, besides this last, the last week where we've really started to see a surge in Dubuque, to be fair, the numbers have <clears throat> stayed pretty low. Um, so, I, so I think that's why they, they, they were probably having comfort with the curtain protocols the way they were. I, 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 think, I think it's worthwhile for me to talk to Dr. Vander Heiden and, and um, a few other providers um, and, and start having the discussion on how we can change the algorithm. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you that I think we, we need to we need to start having that conversation. Thank you. I appreciate the role you're playing, yes. and, and I really appreciate that statement. I'm very frustrated. Diane, this is this is Supervisor Wickham. Um, as far as when I read the state code, the Board of Health has tremendous tremendous power. That's why they set up boards of health is for these types of circumstances. So I would plead with the Board of Health to continue to be more active and more proactive and continue to, to, to try to turn over any stone and, when needed, convene and make decisions. That's well, what we have that power by state code. Yeah, 
But we well, can't get the we can't get local people to respond to our board of health. Maybe we need to have Sheriff Kennedy deputize them or something and let them well, go. Well, the de defeatist the uh, defeatist attitude like that will get you exactly where you're at. But we can't tell them how to practice. Um, right is the problem, is, is the barrier that I'm seeing. And, you know, I, I don't know that we, if we need to throw diplomacy out the door or out the window and just, you know, we, I, that's why I really feel like I, I appreciate Dr. Canero's statement that he will start having those discussions. Um, they, the providers have to have the buy-in. We, our hands are tied without them agreeing that we need a more aggressive protocol is, is how I understand this. Why couldn't I mean, you just contract with another testing company? But who's going to order the test? Dubuque County Public Health. Jay, this is Diane Pate Freiberger. We would still need a provider to do that, uh, a physician or nurse practitioner to, um, to order those tests. I don't believe that it's a problem with us getting the orders from physicians like the, the gentleman that spoke before had said that his physician had actually ordered it. But I think where the thread is missing here is we're not allowed to be in those conversations with either the incident management team, which I understand, or their subcommittees or their liaisons even. We have no direct communication there. And so with that thread being missing, we um, actually are not in part of those conversations. Okay, uh, any other comments or questions? It seems like uh, in the area of testing, we seem to be treading water, um, unable for people to get tested, um, and we don't have answers. Therese, do you have any input as to how we can increase testing? Well, I'm hoping that we can go through the strike teams. And Diane, I hope that you know that if you are thinking that we're hiding something from you, please know that we're not. We are working 15 hours a day, seven days a week. We are trying to come up with solutions, but again, there's some solutions that we just hit the dead end. So we are thankful that Bobby Canero is our liaison. We have a very good working relationship with all of our healthcare providers in Dubuque County. We would like to maintain that, and that's why we are very thankful that we do have Dr. Bobby Canero as our liaison. And just know that we are willing to help every single resident in Dubuque County of what we can do. But if there's no testing available, then our hands are tied. So we're looking at every option possible. All right, there's a question. Um, Susie Stroud, who's... Uh, oh, I got it now. Thanks. All right, Susie, I'll let you, I'll let you ask the question. Well, I was just wondering what support... See, I'm, I'm so new to the Board of Health. Um, what support does uh, Dr. Canero need from me as a Board of Health member to get this going? Is there something else I can do? I think the first step is for me to bring in the right players um, within the medical community um, for a meeting. And I think there should be some Board of Health members at that meeting, too, because I think what we need to do collectively is to create a new algorithm or to expand on the current algorithm for testing. So I think once I identify those providers and we set up a meeting, uh, you know, I'll, I'll circle back to the Board of Health and see who, all, who else would like to participate in that. Yeah, I can all, Bobby, this is Tom Besh, and I can only think that the entire Board of Health would like to be involved in that discussion. If one, sure. yes. All right, I, I'm going to read a 
question. Um, let's see. If, uh, if there's no help or guidance coming from the federal or state, um, let's see, if we have a local lab that can do testing, uh, can we contact, contract directly with them? Um, apparently no one has the answer for that. Um, normally if I'm told, I, my, my, I usually take the position, if somebody doesn't show me that I can't do it, I want to do it. So I don't know if anybody else has that feeling. If anybody else feels like that in regard to this testing. They're not telling us we can't do it. We're probably not going to. I have a question. They're probably not going to say, hey, we really want you guys to do what we're not doing. So is there anything, maybe we need to go to, I don't know, uh, CJ and ask them if we're violating anything under Iowa code. And if not, maybe we move forward. We have to put them well, we have, in, in fairness, we have had, I think that Patrice has made tremendous progress today. The, we asked for a strike team. The governor's office has responded. I think Mr. Raber is going to communicate another piece on behalf of the Board of Supervisors concerning um, Test Iowa, working on partnerships. I think that's amazing. We're going to be out of the box with number two. Number three is underway. I think we're making tremendous progress. It's not where we want to be, but we're not standing still. Um, I have a question for Patrice. If you could tell me, we have 70 active cases in Dubuque. We have 87 positives, 17 recovered. Of those 70 active cases, do you know how many are hospitalized? What's the capacity locally? I do not, and or um, I do not. Iowa Department of Public Health does gather that information, but what they share publicly is for Region 6. Okay. And that's and I think, on Yeah, and the they removed Iowa. our, they dropped us from a 10, I think, as a region back down to a 9 because yeah. of the liquidation of the numbers with more testing, some people recovered, and anyway, we're back to a, a 9 situation in their, in whatever their matrix is. <laughs> I think we got a good way forward. I think it'll be interesting to see what we can accomplish between now and Wednesday. Okay, hey, anybody else uh, comments or questions? When is the Board of Health meeting next? Wednesday. With the Board of Supervisors. So we'll, we'll post that as a joint Board of Health, Board of Supervisors meeting, and then we'll have an agenda uh, that the uh, will be under the jurisdiction of the Board of Health, I'm assuming. That's correct. That's what we've been doing the last couple of weeks. Okay. All right. So we haven't, uh, is there any other questions for Dr. Canero or uh, Patrice Lambert? If not, uh, probably want to hear from uh, Tom Berger. Good evening, Dave. Supervisors, uh, I don't have too much to add uh, other than what was uh, already hashed over. Uh, as far as uh, the strike teams that, that was uh, requested, um, there will be some logistical work if, if we do get approved for that. So we're kind of getting uh, work together through the incident management team. So um, other than that, uh, the state did uh, say in our conference call that they're looking at possibly just when they're, they're delivering the PPE to us. So it might be, we might have to switch our processes here because it looks like Northeast Iowa might get it on Thursdays rather than uh, early on in the week. So it's uh, kind of working with that, working with our long-term care facilities, make sure they have the 
you they need and um, other healthcare organizations. So, okay. questions for Tom Berger? Uh, Tom, looking forward, uh, Dave Baker here. Uh, uh, I, I know that we had some concerns about the um, uh, gowns, protective uh, gowns. Uh, PPE. Um, do are we looking forward? Looking forward? Do we still have concerns? Or are we in pretty good shape uh, at this point? We finally did uh, get a large order of gowns in last week, so they were delivered um, as soon as we got them that afternoon to the healthcare facilities. And what they put in for their requests this week, um, we'll be adding add more from the state, but. Uh, yeah, and, and we also did get the uh, um, rain ponchos that uh, I worked with the person at Unity Point about uh, as a, a backup to not having isolation gowns. So um, we're doing a little better there. We're still on some of the other gowns, but um, it's, it's a lot better than it was a couple weeks ago, Dave, definitely. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom? All right, hearing none. Uh, I guess, are there any other comments or questions regarding our uh, COVID-19 work session? This, this would be for the maybe incident team or the testing team. Did the state of Iowa either as a strike force or test Iowa? give you any time frame of when they would get back to you with a yes, no, or you're on the list? The governor's office today told me that initially they said they would hope to get a hold of me in the next day or so. And then she came back and said, in the next couple of days, I will be getting back to you. Okay. So Wednesday will be probably exactly where we are here today. I hope. We'll so. try. <laughs> I mean, it's whenever they contact me, I will share what I know on Wednesday with you, Jay. Yes, I firmly believe you will. Okay. Uh, well, speaking about Wednesday, um, we have uh, Patrice and Tom uh, on board. Is the 10 o'clock time um, still seem like a good time? I know uh, uh, the governor has been going at 11 a.m. sometimes after that but uh, that's when it's scheduled and then uh, I think Tom has uh, some kind of a meeting at 9 30 or 9 o'clock is 10 o'clock still the good time yeah between 10 and 11 works for me and it works for me as well okay all right um, and uh, so we will schedule our uh, next meeting for two days uh, from now on the April 29th um, at 10 a.m. And uh, with that, uh, if there's no other comments uh, at this point, I'd ask for a motion to recess. So moved. I will second that. Motion made and seconded to recess till Wednesday at 10 a.m. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Carried 3-0. We are in recess. Thank you. Goodbye. You beat me to it.